Hello there everyone, I'm Christina of CSL Designs and today I'm going to show you how to make this intertwining wire work bracelet and this is what mine looks like. So we have these intertwining sections of wire work and in my case here I've just chosen to use two different colours to help emphasise the structure that we get in the piece going all the way around. So I just chose to use copper and silver wire but obviously you can choose whichever you want to. You can even choose the same colour wire, you'll still get the nice effect. So just to show you how that would look, I've also made one here that's just in copper wire. Now this one I made in bare copper because I do plan to oxidize this in the future, but I'm waiting to get a few together so I kind of do it in a batch. But you can see you still get a really nice effect. And also I've made another one, again with the silver and copper there. But just to show you the difference, because this first one here is made with 0.8 mil base wire, but this one here is made with one millimeter base wire. So it's really just to show you how this is a little bit chunkier and this is a little bit more open. So it's really up to you how you want yours to look, whether you want to use a 0.8 mil base wire or the one mil, depending on the look that you want. And then just to show you what it can look like on, you can see you have this intertwining effect going all the way around your wrist. So it's really nice and decorative, but it's still nice and comfortable to wear as well because it's pretty flat, so we don't have too much bulk in the bracelet. But regardless which one you want to make, it's the same basic technique for all of them. So if you want to learn how to make them, then keep watching. So then we're going to be using these materials here. Now what I have is three different wires. There's only two different gauges, but I'm just using some different colours. The first gauge here is a 0.8 mil, and I'm using this in silver, you can choose whatever colour you want to. And this is going to be the base wire. Now if you want a bit of a different look, so a little bit of a chunkier look to the bracelet, you can swap this for a 1 mil. And then the other two wires that I have here are both 0.4 mil. So the one is silver and then I have one copper, that's just what I've chosen. You can also choose to just use the one colour for the 0.4 mil, that's completely up to you and the look that you want. But this is then going to be the weaving wire. And really all we're going to need for the main piece here is the wire itself, but then also we just need our findings obviously. So I'm just using the loft or claw clasp and extender chain and then the jump rings there to attach all of it together. You can either use these or you can use whatever kind of clasp that you want to or even make your own. And do check out the description box below the video as well because I always put the material list down there along with any links. And otherwise let's get all the materials ready and let's get started. And then the lengths of wires that we'll need is eight lengths here of about 35 centimeters each. And these are the 0.8 mils of the base wires. Then as for the weaving wires, so the 0.4 mil here, what I'm gonna be doing is working with 70 centimeter lengths at a time. So throughout I'm gonna be adding in a new weaving wire as we make the pattern. And in this case here, I'm just using the two different colors. So what I'm gonna be doing is cutting a few lengths of each there and then making the bracelet. And you can always cut off some more lengths. And obviously if you're using the same color, you can just cut some lengths of that and then keep adding them in as we go. So now I have some lengths of wire ready here. What I'm going to be doing is starting out with the base wires and then obviously one of the weaving wires. But I made my base wires silver and that means I'm going to be starting with the silver weaving wire as well just because I want my clasp area to be silver. Obviously if you wanted it to be copper, what I would recommend is you start with and you make your base wires copper as well to make it match just so you end up being able to attach a copper clasp and it kind of works together nicely, but again, it's completely up to you. So I'm gonna grab my base wires, like I said, and then my silver wire to make that match. So I then grab my first base wire here and I start towards one end, and then also my first weaving wire in the matching color, if you're using the two different colors. And then I wanna to start towards one end of the weaving wire as well, so I just leave a little tail there. And what I wanna do is we need to attach this weaving wire to the base wire, and we need to leave about seven centimeters or so of the base wire. And we're gonna put that tail behind, and then we attach it just by wrapping it around the base wire, just the ones like this. So it's now attached. Now obviously you can still move up and down, but then we need to start bringing in the other base wires as well, just one at a time, and we're gonna get straight into the weave that we're gonna be using. So the weave that I'm using is a diagonal wire weave, and what we do is I bring in then the next base wire, place that above the first one, and then just on top of that tail there. And then keep hold of that still, and try and keep the weaving wire there on the place of the base wire that I wanted to. Then I take the long end of the weaving wire, bring it over the top of both of them, and then back down underneath towards the bottom. And make sure all your wraps are nice and tight. Then we need to come up between the two base wires. So just bring it up through like that. So up between the two that we just wrapped across the top of, and then push that down. So when you bring it up between two wires there, 
through base wires, you can use that to push down and help tighten the weave as well. Then bring in another one. Same principle, place that above as the new top one. And then bring the weaving wire over the top of the top two now. And then down behind both again towards the bottom and then come up between the two that we just wrapped across the top of. So that's up between the top two base wires there. And then use that to push down and make the weave nice and tight. And then we just keep repeating this with every single base wire to basically add them all into the piece. So this is kind of more or less a starting point. Let's get that little tail out of the way. Place the next base wire there. Bring the weave wire across the top of them. The new top two. And then down behind to then come up between the two that we just wrapped across the top of. And then again push down. So just keep repeating this until we've incorporated all of the base wires in the same way here. So now I added in all the base wires here, then this is what it looks like. And I have my weaving wire coming out between those top two as if I was going to do another wrap. So because we don't now have any more base wires to add in, all I'm going to do to finish off this row, you could say, of wraps that we've made, I'm literally just going to bring it around the top one by itself. So just that single top wire and then down behind all the rest again to come down towards the bottom. And then we have basically the beginning of the weave. And this is, you could call one round of the weave. And then what I like to do as well is just take my chain nose pliers and kind of squeeze the wraps together and also just straighten it out because it might tend to get a little bit crooked due to the nature of the wrap. So just straighten it out like that. So it comes nice and straight from the top to the bottom there. And then to start out the next round, we literally just need to do the same thing, but obviously because we've already added in the wires, the base wires, we don't need to do that. We just need to keep doing the same movements though. So I have my weaving wire coming at the bottom and then what I'm going to do is wrap it around the bottom single wire by itself. So down between the two bottom ones, just a single wrap there. So that's basically the equivalent to the very first wrap that we did to attach the wire. And then I like to kind of push my wraps down as I go as well. Then we come around the bottom ones again and then wrap over the top of the bottom two base wires. So down between basically the second and the third. So like that and come up between the two that we just wrapped across the top of and that's where I then use the weaving wire there to help push it tight against the first round that we did. Now move up one step so you just want to go across the top of the next two base wires and push it down. You can use your fingers, you can use the wire like I do there as well, you can use pliers, it's completely up to you. But then come up between the two base wires that we just went across the top of and then push it down. And you literally then just continue like this, stepping up one wire each time. So you can see it's the same movements as when we made the first round. We're now just not adding any wires in. We're just working with the wires that we already have. So and keep doing this until you reach the top. So I now completed this round as well. And you can see I reached all the way to the top. And remember to do that single wrap around the top wire by itself before you then bring the weaving wire all the way down to be able to start again. And then what you might find with this weave here is that the two rounds now, the two separate ones that we've done, kind of don't sit completely straight next to each other. So what I like to do is take my chain nose pliers and then make sure I squeeze them together. Basically just like I did with the first round by itself, it just really helps position them into place and make it much more straight and neat. So just like that then they're going to stay nicely there. And then you just want to start out another round with the weaving wire here at the bottom in the exact same way. So around that bottom wire by itself and then around the two bottom wires to then come up between the same two. And then we just start out another round like this. And that's what we want to do a few times now. So what I'm going to end up with is five rounds in total. So I have a little section of weave just here at the end of the wires. So now I've got my five rounds there of this weave. Then we're getting to the point where we need to start making the main part of the bracelet. So we also need to start separating our base wires out into different groups. So what I'm going to do is I have my weaving wire coming down behind again. After that last round, I'm going to take the two top wires and separate them out a little bit. 
just bring them towards the top. And you can also do the others now if you want to do the bottom ones. We don't have to do that just yet. Because we're just going to work them one at a time. Which is kind of to show you what's going to happen. So I'm going to just focus on bringing those two top ones out first. Just to get a little bit more space there to work with. And we know that we're then focusing on these. Because then what I need to do is take this weaving wire. And instead of starting a new round right from the bottom. I need to bring it up between those top two and the rest. So just below that second wire from the top and then what we basically need to do now is continue the same weave but only around these two base wires so that just means you have less wires to work with so you're just gonna go around the bottom one of the two by itself just to bring it through there so we do that single wrap just around that bottom one again push it tight and then bring it up in the same place so it can be a little bit fiddly because the other wires there can kind of be a little bit in the way. But just work with it the best you can. Then we'll go over the top of both of them. And then come up between the two that we just went over the top of. And then push that down to then go around the top one by itself, just that single wire. So you can see it's literally just basically one movement more or less in the weave instead of going across all of the base wires. And then you just keep going like this for a bit. So that means we go straight down to the bottom of the two again and just repeat. So do the single wrap around the bottom one, come up in the same place, keep pushing your wraps down, go over the top of both of them and then up between the two so we can then go around the top one by itself. And you're going to start to then see that these two wires with a weave on is going to start to kind of grow out from this little section of the weave. First little thing section that we did. And you just keep going like this until you reach a certain length. And then we need to also do that around the bottom wires down here with that same colour. So I'm not kept weaving there until I have the length that I need for this one. So you call it a little leg of the weave around these two base wires. And then what we need to do is make sure it's more or less the right length. So this length here is about one and a half centimeters. Now what I like to do is just a little tip is I like to take a scrap piece of wire and then measure that on a measuring tape and then put a bend into it. So I know that this end here is the length that I want. So more or less the right length. So just like that. And I use this to measure against it. That's much easier. And also throughout, we're going to need a couple of different lengths here. So until we get into the main part, then we're going to keep repeating making these lengths and it's much easier to then use a length like this to measure with. And then what we need to do is repeat this again, but on the bottom. So we just separate out the bottom two, the same way as the top two there, just so we get a little bit of space to work with. And then I want to grab another length. So this is a separate length of weaving wire, one of the ones we cut off again in the matching color. So another silver, that's the same color as the top one I used. Just put the end behind. And then we literally just start off the weave again around these two base wires in the exact same way. So just around the bottom one by itself. And then around both of them to then come up between the two. And you keep pushing it down and just make sure you push the weave nice and tight down. So it basically looks like it starts from where the big part of the weave there finishes. So it kind of just is coming out in the same way. Obviously you can pull it up so you can see there, so it isn't connected to it, but if you just keep pushing it down to make sure it's going to stay in place. And then you just want to get the same length on this weave as we have on the top one. So now I've got the second leg down here as well, both of them are about the same length. Now I just want to mention as well, the lengths that we weave before we shape anything, they don't have to be precise, but it's just to have a decent length here that's about the length that we need. And then we can always either undo a little bit or add more, so adjust it once we shape it. It's just to have something to work with that we can then shape. But then, before we start shaping anything, we also just need to weave around these middle wires as well, base wires. So as you can see, we have four left, so that's also going to be split into two groups, or two pairs rather. So we're going to have a top one and a bottom one. But first, we need to attach a separate length of weaving wire. And in this case now, I'm taking my copper. So these are going to be the other colour, and I'm putting it behind them and just having it come up between the bottom ones there and then the bottom leg that we've already weaved. So it's going to slot in right there. That's why I also make sure to open up these lengths that I've already weaved a fair bit just to give a bit more space otherwise you might not be able to get the weaving wire all the way in there. And then we just start wrapping around 
the bottom one by itself first of all and push that all the way down and it can be quite beneficial again to use your chain nose to just help push it all the way down there so again it's going to sit right close to the last round in the large weave that we did and otherwise we'll pick up the same weave and we're now just going to be making it around these four base wires to begin with just kind of connecting together first of all so do a full round until you reach around the top one of the four do that single wrap around that remember that and then what we're going to be doing here is three rounds around these four base wires so now I have those three rounds there, then we basically just need to do the same thing as before, but just with a copper wire obviously, and the two middle pairs now. So I'm just separating out the base wires, so we have the two top ones out of these four in the middle, going kind of towards one side, and then the other two going towards the other side. And also just make sure that, that the wraps that we've done, the bottom there, are pushed as far down as they'll go, so they sit right next to the end, in my case there, of the silver. Then I'm just going to take the weaving wire and continue wrapping the same weave around the top two. So that just means, just like before, when we did it with the silver, I'm going to do it around the bottom one of those two first of all, and then over the top of both of them. Make sure to push it down, and then we just come up between the two to then complete that round by going around the top one by itself. And that's just how you start out the weave around the two base wires by itself. So just like that. And then you just want to keep weaving here. Now the length that we're going to need for these is going to be a bit longer. So we need about two and a half centimeters of length there. And again, I've already pre-measured my length of scrap wire there that I can then use to measure. And we also then, once you've done that side, take another length of the copper weaving wire and then attach it around these two that we have left that we haven't done singularly left yet then attach them in the same way as we did with the bottom silver ones and make the same length as the top one so the two same colors there so now I got both lengths of the weaves with the copper wire done as well and about the same length then before we can continue weaving anything we need to shape some of this to obviously start getting the actual pattern that we want so we need to shape the ones that we made first so not the newest ones but the previous ones and I just again make sure that the legs all of them really are spread out to the side so even the copper ones as well spread them pretty far out both so you have space to weave but also for the next part here we need to shape the previous ones so I'm just going to take one at a time then what I do is it's already going out to the side and what we need to do is start putting a curve into it so I'll bring it over the copper one in my case here while adding a curve into it so we just gradually and gently bring it down and into the middle while keeping it flat and then we start to get that curve in place and have the end of the weave there coming in towards the middle so overlapping the copper ones and also you can just push the copper ones a little bit back to again create more space for it so something like this and then in the middle here, what we need to do is for these base wires to come back out, straight out. So what I'm going to do is just put my finger on the end of the weave and hold the base wires in my hand. And then kind of push against the weave part while pulling the base wires more straight out from the end there. And then you can see we've kind of got this shape in place where we have a curve. But then we bring the base wires more back out straight. So we can always adjust it more if we need to, because then I'm going to do the other side and we need to obviously make them match up and then end up meeting up in the middle. So again, I kind of like to put my fingers on the length of the weave while I bring the end in. So it gives that curve. And on this one as well, I need to then push against the end of it while bringing the base wires back out straight again. And then it's just a matter of now adjusting it in place because obviously you can see they don't quite line up with each other. So I want to just adjust it as much as I need to. So they do. So basically they're going to end up meeting up in the middle of the piece. So just make sure it's all nice and symmetrical. And we have as symmetrical a shape between the two as well. 
So just keep working with them until they meet up nicely and also the ends of the weave there. Now this is also the part where I said the lengths of weave that we make, they don't have to be perfect because we can always, we still have the weaving wires attached, we can always add more to it. If you can maybe see some of them are a little bit short and you might find that they're not 100% even anyway when you bring them in close to each other. So for instance here you can see it's not quite even but even so you might need to add a couple more rounds or even take some away so if you need to undo anything to make sure that the ends of the weave meet up just nicely because then what we need to do is use the weaving wires well to connect them together again these two pairs of wires. Make sure everything keeps being pushed down but otherwise just keep adjusting this until you're happy with how it's going to look. Now because I just needed to make an extra wrap or so on one of them here to make them even, I'm just going to take, in my case is the bottom one, I want to make an extra wrap, take the same weaving wire from that pair, so make sure it's that weaving wire, and literally just continue the same weave as if you were doing it before, but obviously now it's just been shaped, so it doesn't make a difference. And just come up between the two to make that single wrap around the top one. And then just down between the two pairs there in the middle. Because then I have them about the same length. I can just take my chain nose and help push them nice and tight together there. Now what we need to do is, like I said, connect the two sides together, so the two pairs here. And we do that by again using this bottom weaving wire out of these, these two pairs. And you start out another round of the weave in the exact same way. So around the bottom pair to begin with, the same way that I just did. I come down between the two here and then come up between the two base wires we just wrapped across the top of. And then instead of going around the top one by itself and then do another round, we need to cross over to the top pair. So I'm just gonna go, this is just like we did when we had more base wires. We then just basically pretend that they're always already connected. We'll go down between the top two and the other pair there and come up between the two that we just went across the top of and then across the top of the top two so that's the top pair to then come up between them and then we wrap around that top one by itself just like that so that's now a full round with these four base wires and you can see they're now connected and what I then just like to do is again use my chain nose pliers to make sure I push this down because again it can be a little bit crooked so you just make sure to push these wraps down so they become as seamless with the other wraps that we've done just like that so basically it looks like again this just continues from the bottom length like it technically does but then also actually continues from the top one even though the weaving wire from that is just kind of left out so what we want to do now is do three rounds like this so do three rounds in that connection point so now we've got the connection point done there, then what we need to do is still use this same weaving wire, so in my case a silver one that we just used for the connection point. And then what we need to do is separate these four base wires in the middle out again into the pairs that they were before. So just take the top two towards the top there and the bottom two towards the bottom, again just to get the space. And then I need to use this weaving wire to start wrapping another leg, you could say, a length of weave around the top two and you can just separate them out a little bit so you start out the weave in the exact same way as the other times push them all the way down so you continue it from the top here and then you need a length of the weave on this top one and then you just take another weaving wire of the same color as the top one and start that on the bottom one as well and get the same length on there so now we both of those lengths as well and the length of these are about two centimeters so again I already prepared that little piece of scrap wire that I'm just now going to keep using to measure with because these lengths here are what we're going to be using throughout the main part of the bracelet so the rest of it until we get towards the end again. So I'm just going to keep using this one now whenever I'm making and wrapping new lengths but then once we've done these in place then we obviously need to shape the copper ones to bring them back up because then we need to make another connection point and get that shape in place. So first of all, I'm just gonna make sure everything is pushed all the way down, and then I like to push the top ones, the new ones that I just made, back a little bit, just to give space. So when I bring these other ones 
the previous ones around they kind of overlap and it fits nicely together so again just make sure you kind of hold your fingers on there while you're bringing it over the other one on the top there just bring the wig and wear with you and then again it's a matter of you can always adjust the length of the weaves just not too precise to begin with like I said so bring that down and then just kind of kick it up on the end put your finger or your nail against there to then give that leverage so you can bring the base wires back out straight from the end the bottom one as well do the same thing just get that weaving wire out of the way bring that up and into the middle and then kick out the little end of the weave and then always make sure as well throughout because the base wires are going to get shaped and kind of misshapen quite a lot because obviously we're moving them around a lot just keep straightening them out as you go so as I bring them back out here I always run them through my fingers to straighten them back out so they're ready for the next pat because we don't want obviously any misshapen base wires in the sections where we're weaving but then you can start to see the effect that we're going to get now so really what we need to do now is make sure that we have the curves and the shape in place and then otherwise obviously look at the lengths of the weave so these two that I've just shaped make sure that they're even there they're finished in the same place and then the top weaving wire you now just put out of the way and then that's when you want to use the bottom one of these two pairs to then start making the weave again but around all these four so make another connection point and then once you fasten them in place then we need to make another two tails you could say or legs of the weave lengths with these as well so now I made that connection point then then we need to use that same wire still to start off the weave section on these base wires again so in my case the copper ones that I'm working with just take the length that you made the connection point with the weaving wire and start out around the top two base wires there first of all start out the same weave and then again you just use that same length now to keep measuring again so it's going to be the whole middle of the bracelet and then you kind of get the gist of how we're making this pattern so you obviously make these two legs that length then once you've made them you push them back then bring the other two the previous two in my case the silver ones around creating that curve and then connect them in the middle and you just keep repeating this throughout until you reach almost the length that you need but then obviously we just need to make the end on the other end as well just just like this so I now kept going here using the same technique throughout and then I've reached the other end where we now need to start thinking about finishing it off as well and we're going to do that in the exact same way as we started out so as you can see here I've already weaved the legs the individual ones so I've got my couple ones coming out which would be due to be brought over next and then my silver ones here that I just connected and then continued those legs. But then the lengths are a little bit different just like they were in the beginning. So for instance, with the copper ones, in my case, they're going to be the long ones again. So I'm going to use that same one that I used in the beginning. And then as for the silver ones that are the last ones, I'm going to be using the shortest one to measure with. So again, just they're different from the middle section there, just like we did in the beginning. And also, you need to pay attention to which colour that you finish up on. Obviously, assuming that you're using the two colours, if you're just using one colour wire, then don't worry about it. But if you're using two like me, you want to make sure you finish off in the same way that you started out. So because I want my class to be silver, which is why I started out with the silver down here, I also want to make sure that I finish off with these legs in the same way. So I need to make sure that because I want the silver wire to be by the clasp at the end there that they are the ones that come around the outside and then the copper ones in my case are going to finish in the middle and that's why I made the lengths like this so the copper ones are the long ones here they are going to come around and they end up finishing here in the middle and the silver ones are just going to come right around those and end up meeting up so they're going to end up being level there just basically how we started out but just in reverse and I also just want to mention that all the weaving wires throughout if you want to you can cut them off so if you want to finish them off as you go, if you feel like it gets a bit messy, but personally I prefer to leave them till the end. So you can see here I have them all along the back just kind of tucked out of the way, so they don't get in my way and I get messed or tangled up or anything. But, like I said, you can finish them off throughout, but I personally prefer to do it at the end just because I don't want to risk cutting off the wrong wire, maybe one that I still need to use. But that's completely up to you, regardless when you do it, it's going to be the same way. But then what we need to do now is finish off the ends here. So I'm going to be shaping these last legs. 
So that just works in the exact same way. I've already prepared the lengths, obviously the approximate ones. We can always adjust it. So I just push down the top ones a little bit to then bring around the copper ones. So that's how they end up in the middle. Again, make sure to kind of kick them back out. We'll get that nice curve in place. And then the other one as well even as we can and kick it back out and then again I still just straighten out the lengths of the base wires as much as I can and then it's a matter of just adjusting this until it sits nicely so I push the one that I pushed down back up again so it lays more nice and flat like that just as I've done throughout and then now it's a matter of basically leveling these off with each other Again, just like we've done throughout, but now obviously these are just a bit longer and this is with the aim of then finishing off the end of the bracelet. So if you need to add any weave on either one of them, or if you need to take some away, just make sure that these two in the middle, the copper ones in my case, are going to be level. And now that I have them level, we then want to use the weaving wire from the bottom one of the two. And then otherwise just repeat the same thing so far, so we're basically making a connection point between these two legs. So that means we just start in the same way around this one by itself. Make sure to push it down. But then instead of just doing the top base wire by itself now and come back again, we need to cross all the way over and come down between the base wires and the other one there. Just like how we connect the legs together throughout the bracelet. And again, also the same amount of rounds. So do three rounds for this until you get them nicely connected. And once they're connected, then we need to bring in the silver legs as well. So just start with one side at a time. Again, make sure to bring a curve into it. And now instead of crossing over and under, like we've been through and throughout, you just need to bring this in so it ends up laying the end of it next to the middle section. Then in my case, the copper. But still bring a bit of a curve into it. So it looks to kind of be continuing the pattern and then bring the base wires back out straight again. Same with the other side. Just add that curve into it. And then you'll also be able to tell if you need to do a few more rounds of the weave, add any weave there, or maybe take some away if you made them a bit too long. Then you can always adjust that now. Okay, and just make sure there's a bit of space. And then we have all the base wires coming straight out again at the end, because then what we need to do is make sure, like I said, that the straight, so we have basically a straight line across where the weaves end. I think I can tell I need to maybe undo one on this side, but otherwise it looks pretty straight. But then you just take the weaving wire from this bottom one and basically do the exact same thing we did there in the middle, but now we're going to connect all of them together. So we just take that start another round and then we just keep moving across as if we did in the beginning really when we added in the new base wires. So do this for the same amount of rounds as we did in the beginning. And then this is basically a little end piece. So now that I made those rounds of the weave there, then we're pretty much finished the main part of the bracelet. So what I want to do now is actually get rid of my weaving wires first of all. So I'll flip the piece around to the back here where I have all my ends coming out. And if you've left them all to the end like I have here, you can just start on one end and then work your way down, taking one at a time. Then how we're going to finish off the wires is I'm going to take my flush cutters here and obviously we need to cut off the excess, but we just want to pay attention to how they're wrapping around the base wire. So this one here is the last one that I just used. So what I want to make sure to do is this is wrapping around that bottom base wire by itself once, and it's coming from the front of the bracelet there towards the back and wrapping in this direction. So I want to make sure I lay it down flat, and then I want to cut off the excess of it, basically more or less right between those two bottom base wires, because then once I cut off the excess, I'm going to be left with a short little tail, something like that, where I then take my chain nose pliers, and then that short little tail, obviously if you put your finger over it, you can feel it there, so you want to make sure that we get rid of that, so just take your chain nose pliers, and then you push it in, and then if you push it in, and I just like to roll in the direction that that weaving wire is going, because then that basically tucks that end in between the base wires and finishes it off nicely. So it won't be sticking out and catching or scratching anything. 
So that's the one. And it's just the same principle. Move to the next one. Again, this is wrapping around that bottom one in this direction here. So bring it further around as far as it'll go. And then go in with your wire cutters or flush cutters and cut off the excess. So it leaves just that short little tail and get the wire out of the way. And then push it down using your chain nose and just kind of do that rolling motion. So it tucks, the very end tucks in between the base wires. Because then when you run your finger over it, you can't feel it. If you can feel it, then you just need to tuck it in a little bit more to make sure that you can't feel it at all with your fingers running over it. Because obviously, then you won't be able to feel it when you wear it because it won't be against your skin. So just go through and do that with every single of the ends of the weaving wires. So now I've gone through and got rid of all the excess weaving wires here and then the back is also nice and flat so it's comfortable to wear. Then all that's left to do is get rid of these base wires. So what we need to do is make sure we're on the back again. So the way you can tell the back from the front is on the back here, on the connection points, we have the weaving wire crossing over the top of all of those base wires at the connection point. Whereas on the front, we have the actual weave, so that look of the diagonal wire weave. So that's how you can tell the front and the back apart from each other. And then what we need to do is focus on getting rid of these excess base wires, but also actually make a loop that we can attach our findings to. So then what we're gonna do is start from the outside because we're gonna use the outside wires here to actually then also make the loop with and make sure that the back of the bracelet here is facing upwards. So we're working towards the back of it. And then I take, in my case here, I start with my furthest left one, bring that over all the others towards the opposite side, just straight across like this make the bend in that base wire right after where the weave is. And then I'm gonna take the furthest right one and cross it over towards the left in the exact same way. Make sure you get a nice and as sharp a bend as possible over to the opposite side. And then what we need to do is bend one of these. So to do that, I'm gonna get my chain nose pliers out and we need to bend, I'm just gonna bend the right one coming towards the left there that's kind of the back one of the two. So I put my chain nose pliers where I want my bend to be, which I want to be in the middle. So if you imagine, if you kind of judge where the middle is, the wires that we have left that are sticking straight up, we have a total of six. So imagine that we have three going a bit towards either side and then the middle is right there in between them. So I want this wire to come basically straight up in that spot. So just place your pliers in that right place and then bend it straight upwards and basically almost joining the others again. You can just adjust it if you need to. Still make sure that it's pushed all the way down so it doesn't, for instance, come up like this, but that it's pushed all the way down and then we have it coming straight up. So we make basically a 90 degree bend right there in the middle. So there we go. And then what I wanna do is use the other one that we took from the left side towards the right and we need to wrap that around it. So you can just kind of separate out a little bit from the others because it's just around that single one. And then I start bringing this, it's already coming in front of it. And then bring it in between that and the other base wires like that in the process of basically wrapping it around and make sure you push that wrap all the way down to where the bend is and just keep wrapping it around. You can always use your pliers to help make sure that that wrap is as tight as possible around the other base wire. And I like to just do it one more time. So bring it in between again just to wrap around in the exact same way. And again, just making sure that my wraps are nice and tight. So basically just like doing a wrap loop, which we will be doing as well. Like that and have it come out towards the opposite side there. So this wire is now nice and secure around the other one. Then what we need to do is actually cut off the excess of it. And for that, I'm gonna again get my flush cutters in and then just go in and cut off the excess after that last wrap. Make sure it's just that wire that we're cutting off. 
and then remove that and then because I cut off the white just always make sure to squeeze down the very end because if you run your finger over this now you'll be able to feel a bit of scratchiness at the end of the wire so make sure you push that in nice and tight as tight as possible against the other wire that's wrapping around just to finish it off nicely and then we have this wire that's wrapping around is going straight up again make sure that's squeezed down and then what we need to do is use the other wires here so I can flip it around however you need to hold it to kind of get the best view is up to you but I'm going to flip it around to the front now and then we need to make sure that we kind of separate them out like I mentioned so I have three a bit more going towards one side and side and three more towards the other side with that one in the middle that we just wrapped around and then what we need to do is bring I bring all of them at the same time together down towards the back on this side that they're coming out of that wire that's going straight up just straight down flat against the back there the same with the other ones so all three at the same time and then bring them down on the opposite side again push them nice and flat against the back of the piece and then we can just bring it to the back here if you need to adjust anything you can do that you need to push any wires into the right place we can also push this wire with the wrap on forward a little bit just so it sits a little bit more level with the rest of the piece so just like that then we need to cut off the excess of these so again I'm going to bring in my flush cutters and then just go in just a little bit below where they actually bend around the top there so I leave a few millimeters and something like this and go in and cut off the excess you can just do one wire at a time or a couple at a time and then what I like to do is make to make sure the two sides get more or less level is I use that first side as a measurement so I put my pliers against it and then go straight to the other side and cut them off so they get as nice and even as possible so like that then obviously right now they're sticking out so you can feel them and that won't be too comfortable so what we need to do is squeeze them tight so I take my chain nose or flat nose and then I put my pliers on either side making sure I'm on the end of those wires that we just cut off and if you can grab them all three at the same time and you basically just squeeze them tight so you squeeze them down so the very ends of the wires get pushed in towards the other wires basically and I like to kind of just flip it around however I need to and then just push them in place as well because that basically then gets rid of that scratchy end of all the wires because it almost gets hidden a little bit inside around the back there so however you need to squeeze them down and obviously make sure you put your finger over it so you can't feel anything sticking out and then once you've done that you can also push them tight if they're coming out to the side a little bit so against the middle there once you've done that then all this is to do is use this wire here in the middle to make our wrapped loop and you would just do that in the same way as any other wrap loop that you're going to make. So take your chain nose pliers and then place them a little bit above the first wrap that we did. So we have a little bit of space there, basically some bare wire, because that's what we're going to wrap around once we've made the loop. And put a bend in. I like to put it towards the side like this so the loop becomes nice and flat. Then I'm just going to do a little bit more. I take my, in this case, some six step bell making pliers. You can also use round nose pliers if you want to, it doesn't really matter. I just like using these because I know I get the same size loop whenever I use the same step there on them. I'm just going to use the smallest one and then bend this back around till we get a full circle. Bring it all the way around like that. You can see that we get a full circle. Then I take my chain nose pliers again, or flat nose place them onto the circle and then use the tail here to wrap around below that circle so that's where we then 
kind of filling in that empty gap of the bare base wire and just keep wrapping, make sure they're nice and tight until you meet up with the bottom wrap there and basically there's no more space left just going to make sure here that the wraps are nice and flat next to each other so you can also, to do that, make sure to kind of push it down with your pliers as you go as you're bringing it around and then once you've wrapped it and you can't get any further, so you, there's no more space for any more wraps here I'm going to again take my flush cutters or wire cutters, whatever you're using cut off the excess and then they're going to fit perfectly so the end of this wire here is going to meet up with the end of the first wrap that we did from that wire when you obviously squeeze this down so it's almost like they're meeting up like that and then just make sure you always run your finger over it so you can't feel anything scratchy from the wires and that's basically the end finished off so obviously we have that loop now where we can attach our findings to repeat on the other end and then all that's left to do is shape the bracelet so what I just want to do before we shape the bracelet is show you what they look like compared to each other so the two different base wire sizes there while they're still laid out flat so while it's easy to see so you can see here on the right we have the 0.8mm base wire so it gives a little bit of a finer look you could say and a bit more open as well and here on the left we have the 1mm base wire so you can see it's a little bit chunkier in the look so really it's up to you what you prefer and you can choose the base wire according to the preference so to then shape the bracelet here, you can either shape it around something that has a size and shape you want it to have, so like a bracelet mandrel or something, but you can also just use your hands and fingers if you don't have that. Now what you then just do is you go into a place and you start putting a curve into it, making sure the front of the bracelet is facing outward, so the back of it there is facing in towards your wrist. And you don't want to go into one place and just make a big bend because that will make it out of shape, but just go in and then start gradually adding a curve, going back and forth here. You can see we're getting a curve there. Go to the other side and just keep doing this, working your way back and forth from side to side, basically until the two ends there so your clasp can be used and they meet up. So I now finished shaping my bracelet and then this is what it looks like and it's ready to wear. So you can see we get this really nice effect of the intertwining sections of the wire work. Obviously the different colors that I've used in this one kind of emphasizes that even more, but you can really get the effect as well even if you choose to use the same color wire goes all the way around there and then in this case here I've made my bracelet more oval I personally prefer that because I feel like it sits better on the wrist rather than a round bracelet but that's completely up to you so this is the one with the 0.8mm wire and the two colours and then the other two here so the one on the far left that's the 1mm base wire so you can see the slight difference in them and in the middle there I just use the same colour wire just again to show you the different effect that you can get so you still get that really nice intertwining effect even though you use the same colour wire and in the future I will be oxidising this again that's going to really help emphasise all the texture in the wire work as well so I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial please feel free to check out my channel with loads of other tutorials especially if you love wire work because I love it myself so I have loads of them but thank you so much for watching this one and I'll see you in the next one